Okay, so we're going to move progressively inside. What we've been talking about is the, are, are the peripheral targets of every cranial nerve. So you understand the components, the peripheral components of every cranial nerve. And now we're going to look at where they come out of the nervous system. To understand this, I want to go back to the development of the spinal cord. Remember that there's a sulcus limitans in the embryonic lumen that is going to develop into the central canal. And it separates the alar plate that's going to become sensory, somatosensory in this case, from the basal plate that's going to become motor, both skeletal motor and autonomic motor um, in, in, the, in the ventral part. So the spinal cord is continuous with the hindbrain. As you go up through the spinal cord and become the hindbrain, this lumen progressively becomes more dorsal until it actually opens up. And you can see that it opens up and so that this then becomes over here. So this is this lateral part. This is the basal part. So in the hindbrain, sensory is dorsal to motor. In the, I'm sorry, in the spinal cord, sensory is Dorsal motor is ventral in the hindbrain, sensory is lateral, and motor is medial. Okay? And we can go one step further. This is somatosensory. This is, uh, there's a, a column in here which is going to be autonomic motor and then skeletal motor. Okay, so with that, we're going to make that a little more complicated. Um, here's motor, here's sensory, and we're going to now place the various cranial nerves, the brainstem cranial nerves. This is not optic and not olfactory. We're going to place the brainstem cranial nerves on this uh, diagram. So the ones that go out to somatic muscle are 3, 4, 6, and 12, oculomotor, uh, trochlear, abducens, and hypoglossal. The ones that go to branchial musculature uh, uh, are, are facial. Um, the ones that carry somatosensory information in, is trigeminal and viscerosensory, are glossopharyngeal and vagus. And special sensory, vestibulocochlear cochlear, is coming in most, uh, most laterally. So you notice, I say that, say, viscero, that um, the vagus nerve is viscerosensory. Well, as you know, the vas vagus nerve actually has five components, and the one that's affected in a vagal lesion is, in fact, the branchial motor component. But the exit point is according to what the largest anatomical uh, grouping of fibers is. And in the case of 9 and 10, the greatest number of fibers uh, in, in glossopharyngeal and vagus have to do with viscerosensory, bringing information in from the, the viscera. Um, and the greatest number of fibers in the trigeminal nerve is not to do with chewing, which is a branchial motor muscle, but it has to do with somatosensory in from the face. The largest component of the facial nerve is the branchial musculature um, innervation of the muscles of facial expression. Great. So that's a, so that's a, a rough um, guideline. So essentially, if you're looking at a brain and all of the cranial nerves are going to exit on the ventral surface except for one, if you see a nerve that's exiting dead midline, well, what could it possibly be? Can it be sensory? No, it can't. It has to be motor. And not only does it have to be motor, but it has to be somatomotor. So if it's, if it's exiting close to the midline, your only choices are 3, 4, 6, and 12. If, it's, and if, it's, if the exit point is um, lateral, then you have to be sensory. You can't be motor and so on. Okay, so now let's go and let's, let's assign, let's find the exit points for every single uh, cranial nerve. So this is a stylized uh, version of the base of a brain. This is taken from uh, the Museum of Comparative Anatomy and Paleontology in Paris. 
and it's it's a lovely diagram uh, of a brain. Um, usually, it's it's hard to find all the cranial nerves intact on a single brain specimen. So we're going to use this. So the first uh, cranial nerve, olfactory, comes out from this olfactory bulb, and uh, neurons are actually coming from the nasal epithelium, sending their axons through the cribriform plate to here. The optic nerves are right here and here. These optic nerves are sending an optic, the optic nerve goes out and reaches the retina, which sits about here on these indents. Um, this is the optic chiasm, the, uh, the stalk for the pituitary gland. These are the mammillary bodies. I'm going to tell you these things just so you hear them for the first time, so the next time you hear them is the second time. <laughs> okay. So then, so we've gone from one to two, and the next one is three. You see it, it exits from the midbrain, dead midline. You see that? You see that right there and there. It's exiting dead midline. That's oculomotor. It really can't be, it's the most anterior of the brainstem cranial nerves, and it's dead midline. It's got to be oculomotor. And it's big because it carries quite a few, uh, quite a few um, axons to quite a few muscles. You'll see a little tiny little thing coming out here and here. Here it is. Here it is. This is a really peculiar nerve. It is, it is one of my, it is my favorite nerve. I, I have to confess, it's my favorite nerve. And this is trochlear. Trochlear is a weird nerve. It exits from the dorsal surface of the midbrain and it crosses the midline and it goes, and it's a tiny, tiny little nerve that has to go wrapping around the brain stem and come out. And it takes such a long route to get out and it's so thin and and delicate that it is often damaged by trauma. It is just an incredibly vulnerable nerve. I think that's why I like it. Okay, so that's four. This large nerve on the side of the pons, this is the trigeminal nerve. This is mostly carrying sensory information in from the face uh, and oral cavity. It also carries information out to the chewing muscles. Then we have six, which, so what we're going to see is that six through eight all line up along the junction between the pons and the medulla. Here's the pons, here's the medulla. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Six is midline. Well, yeah, it should be. Six innervates abducens. It's a, it's a somatic motor muscle, so it's dead midline. Seven is a branchial motor, is dominated by branchial motor axons. It's still midline, but lateral to the somatomotor column. So this is seven. And then lateral to that is eight, the vestibulocochlear a sensory neuron, a special sensory neuron. It's coming in laterally. So six, seven, eight. And what we'll see later on is that, is that eight can get a, a tumor called a vestibular schwannoma. So the, the, um, the root of the vestibulocochlear nerve is covered, the, the myelin is provided by Schwann cells. Those can become, um, uh, those can, uh, start to divide uncontrollably. This is a benign uh, tumor. It will not spread uh, outside of the central nervous system. It will just grow and grow and grow, um, and it has to be taken out. And, that is, it, and it is taken out. It's a relatively, um, uh, I don't know if routine is quite the right word, but it is a typically successful operation to remove these vestibular schwannomas. Okay. So behind eight is just in the medulla, uh, very lateral again, is our nine and 10. Because remember, most of what the biggest component of nine and 10 are viscerosensory components. So nine and 10 out here. 11 is this, is this big nerve that's coming out of the spinal cord. Remember that the frame and magnum is about here. So it's coming out of the spinal cord, coming into the cranium. 
that's spinal accessory. And finally, we go up back midline, we go right here, and that is uh, 12. So uh, that's hypoglossal. Okay, so those are the exit points. Um, they're important. And, and for example, one of the importance is, it, it can be illustrated with this, to go back to the vestibular schwannoma. If you have a vestibular schwannoma, it's sitting and it's growing around the root of the vestibular cochlear nucleus. Well, imagine that it continues to grow. Well, first it covers the vestibular root, and then it spreads over to the cochlear root, so you start to get some hard of hearing and some tinnitus uh, uh, symptoms. And if it continues to grow, who's next? Well, seven is, because it's sitting right next to eight. And so now you're starting to get some facial nerve problems. And if it continues to grow, it might go into nine, and you're going to start to get some dysarthria, dysphagia. So you can predict the types of symptoms you're going to get by understanding this type of anatomy. It's very, very important. All right, now we're going to go into the central nervous system and look at uh, where each of these nerves is connecting to. We're not going to go into this in detail, but I just want to mention it um, so that you have a broader picture before we go through each of the cranial nerves uh, in more detail.